So welcome back, and today I want to thank you guys for the new subs, really getting me from like 4,000 to 6,000, and I actually skipped 5,000, I was going to do 5,000 a week ago, and then I looked up and it was like 6,000, it was just kind of crazy to me, because I didn't even think a year ago that I would even be this far, as a matter of fact, in like one of my old update videos, I had a cousin that was telling me that I wouldn't even get past 10 subscribers, and that was kind of disheartening, but I kept putting it in and putting it in, and I got to a point where I am right now, which is pretty awesome, because now I'm getting to help you guys out as much as I can, and I get to put out that message to you guys, so to all the new subscribers, welcome, I'm Robert Loyal, I've been doing this for about a year now, and this is where I'm at. And today, I want to show you guys my appreciation. I want to go ahead and show you guys exactly what I do to create a website. Now, I'd be telling you guys that Spreadshirt is like the best place to do it. And a lot of people like Spreadshirt, but some of the things about Spreadshirt that they don't like is the fact that they don't want to use like their website. Their website is kind of personalized for their website, and it is... I guess the URL is kind of long or whatnot, but if you guys can work with me on this one, I'm going to show you guys exactly what I do. Now, this is not going to be exactly how to put it together, but I'm going to explain to you guys the steps and stuff that are needed to take to actually make a website using Adobe Muse and Spreadshirt. I know Adobe Muse, on the other hand, is kind of like not the web designer's thing to do, you know? And I'm not really a web designer. I'm just going to keep that real. Like, I do design and I do Photoshop and Illustrator and stuff like that. But web design is not my thing. Now, I do know things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That is something that I know how to do. And I understand it. And when I plug that stuff into like Adobe Muse, like I go in and I use Adobe Muse, I actually can get that stuff going because I'm pretty familiar to that stuff. But for me, web design, just not my favorite thing to do. And some of the cons about Adobe Muse is that it comes out with bad code. Like it spits out bad code. And that's kind of like a thing if you want to go and kind of change this up for yourself like you take adobe muse website and you give it to like a real web designer somebody who actually does html css and javascript and a whole bunch of other stuff they're gonna look at that code and get a little confused as a matter of fact they might even break the site you're gonna actually have to pass down that adobe muse file to the actual web designer they're actually gonna put that together for you and because a lot of people don't like Adobe Muse, there's not a lot of people who know how to use it. So there's a lot of reasons why Adobe Muse isn't the thing. But for me, I feel like Adobe Muse is awesome. You can get a simple web design done without code, like I said. And a lot of times people don't even know the back end of coding or anything like that. So they don't really care about if the code is messy. As long as they continue to come to you to get it done, then you're pretty much good. But you guys aren't web designers. You guys are t-shirt designers that are just putting things up on Spreadshirt. And you guys want to be able to do that fast, have a fast website that you guys can market out to other people and with that being said adobe muse is pretty good for that and then just kind of reiterating the fact that if you know web design then you know how to plug things in and you know where to go and all that stuff and that's pretty good to have as well you can control your own seo which is pretty good because a lot of people don't like how websites and their algorithms control your seo and stuff like that but in your website on your own website using adobe muse you can make your own SEO and that can go off to anybody who are looking for that stuff. So it's pretty cheap for me. I feel like $50 a month is cheap, but that's just the entire Adobe Creative Cloud suite package deal or whatnot. And then as a final like good thing for me, I feel like you can just plug anything into it, especially Spreadshirt because you know, this is what I talk about on the channel all the time. So let's talk about some of the elements of an e-commerce website that you guys can use in your actual t-shirt shops going in with Adobe Muse. And the best thing that I can say to you guys who are just kind of starting out is to have a plan, all right? Like I sketch out everything first and then I move it into Photoshop, especially for like web design and stuff like that. I move it into Photoshop, I build it all out, and then I pretty much export all that out on a small folder on my computer so I can use those elements on the website. So you guys, you wanna sketch everything out first, move that stuff into Photoshop, build your websites from Photoshop, and then you can move that into like Adobe Muse. I know that's a lot, but Adobe recognized that's what people do. They made that a little bit easier. Also a good practice for when you're in Photoshop, make sure you're building for responsive designs. That just means whenever you condense the screen, it actually moves in a certain way. So let's just say we're building for like a desktop and a cell phone, okay? So we have the desktop, which is pretty much wide. And then we have like the cell phone version, which is pretty much narrow and skinny up and down type of thing. And with that experience condensing itself down, those elements get squashed in. You don't want that to happen on your cell phone. I mean, you can build a cell phone version, but then when you're updating stuff like that on the desktop version, you also got to update for the cell phone version. And that's not always good to do separately. So what I do is I make responsive design. And this might take a little bit more time in like Photoshop. But just that little extra time or whatnot, it's going to save you a lot when you start going into your actual shop and stuff like that. And you're building it out and you're adding new stuff to your shop because... 
at that point in time, all you have to do is turn a few things off and then move forward, right? But moving forward, you wanna create a landing page. And a landing page is the most appealing part of the website. It's the very first page of the website. I mean, sometimes people have covers, which are like videos and stuff like that, video reels, maybe like some a slideshow that's going back and forth and all that stuff. But a landing page is like right afterwards, okay? So you get people there, you hit the enter button, and then you go into the website or the index. And in my case, I like to just bring people into the index. And with that is a bunch of like pictures just going back and forth. It has the navigation at the top. It pretty much shows you what's going on in the website. It gives you style, it gives you lookbooks and stuff like that. That's just really what it is. And with that being said, I want to break down some of the elements of the landing page. So like I told you, there's a navigation and it's usually like men, women, lookbook, you know, accessories and stuff like that. You guys want to have that there. We also have a shopping cart at the top. Now the shopping cart here is a little bit unique because this is Spreadshirt and Spreadshirt won't let you have like two JavaScripts up at the same time. It's going to contrast. So what I did was I created a shopping cart button what I can put at the top of, which I'll get into a little bit later. You also wanna create like a footer, and this footer is just gonna have information inside of it about what you got going on. What I do there is I put like who my shipping is and how you can return, all right? You gotta return everything to Spreadshirt. You wanna tell people how you're shipping and how they can return things, and that's just how I feel like. You just put that in the footer, and then you can put in like social stuff like your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff. Moving along to the next page, which is pretty much like an inventory page. What I like to do is kind of list out everything that I have in the store. And usually this is for like men and women, you can separate them. In this example, I'm just gonna do men, but you wanna just put together like a list of things. Now this might look different from Spreadshirt because Spreadshirt is something that a lot of people don't like because it's pretty much Spreadshirt's branding. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in a future video. But right now I'm just explaining to you guys what I do. So you wanna go ahead and put everything here, list it out. And it doesn't have to look like what the actual website is gonna be, but what I like to do is just kind of show like a snippet of what's going on. So I have the header and stuff like that. And then I have the body, which is just pretty much the inventory. And then at the bottom, I have the footer with the same information from the beginning. Now moving into Adobe Muse. Adobe Muse is where we build out the website. And this is what I like to do. I like to pretty much create master pages. And master pages are just pretty much templates that go from each page. So from the beginning, like I said, at the index, you wanna just have a consistent look and feel for all of this stuff. Now, I do kinda change it up, like I said, with the shopping cart, but that's gonna be like another master page without the shopping cart because if I use Spreadshirts, JavaScripts, and stuff like that, it's just not gonna translate well into the website. It's pretty much just gonna crash it, and that's not something that we want. So, so we make the menus, make the headers or whatnot, we put our logo at the top, we put the JavaScript in for the shopping cart, and then we make the footer. And what I like to do is I like to make a header, a body, and a footer so I can just dump that stuff in. And it's just gonna create like a folder on the actual site. So that folder I can use for different pages and stuff like that. And then I go into like actual page layout and stuff like that. So I can go into the index and I'll create the index. Everything on the right side of the Adobe Muse is the web map and everything on the left side is just the masters and stuff like that. And you could just plug in different masters. I like to make more than one, but just in case, you know, I really just need one. Now, something else about the masters that you guys kind of understand is that you can create a consistent look and feel, but I want you guys to think about creating a consistent look and feel for your typefaces and font styles. It's not really styling the page, but it kind of is. It's setting it up for it to be semi-styled and then you can go into the actual index page or whatever page you're into and just style it from there as well. But being consistent, and I'm gonna explain this all in another video, hopefully when we get to 100,000 subscribers. So if you guys are new, just go ahead and subscribe. But another thing about consistency inside of that is that you guys can actually use like rulers and stuff like that. So being able to move rulers and be able to set that up. Now I didn't really do that too much here because I've already planned this stuff out, but it's just the necessary steps that you guys gotta take to have a good looking website. Once you got that index page, you can start working on your inventory page and you can start putting in like your shirts and stuff like that. Now, here's another simple trick that I'm probably not gonna show you guys how to do, but redirecting like stuff from Spreadshirt to the actual website that you got going on because you can plug in all these different shirts and stuff like that. 
But if they're not going anywhere, if you can't like get people to buy from it or anything like that, then you just wasted time. And that's something I'm gonna show you guys how to do when we reach our next milestone, which is 100,000 subscribers. So if you guys are ready or excited for that, I'm excited to get you guys there. And I would like to get you guys there. So if you're new to my channel, then go ahead and subscribe. If you guys like this information, then give me a thumbs up because that's really helping me out. But with that being said, you guys, I have to get up out of here. So stay amazing, stay credible, but above all else, stay awesome.